everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day, whoop whoop. Happy Wednesday, hope I am finding you having a fantabulous week. Yes, yeah, so what are we doing today? Oh my goodness, a super fun and fast project for Valentine's. I know it's a little early, but this gives you plenty of time if you're interested in making one of your own. Okay, so we are going to be utilizing this darling, absolutely darling panel. All of the fabrics that I used in this video are part of a line called Know Me Love. It's by, I have to look at my notes, Sheila Kaminsky. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, it looks like I'm saying it right. I hope I am. But it was for Henry Glass. Now, let's talk about this for a bit. So this panel here actually starts off at um, 23 and a half ish approximately by width of fabric. Then um, for this fabric right here, it's called Pink, Pink Tossed Hearts. Oh, the panel is called, um, I'm so sorry, Pink and Red Gnome Love. Gotta love that because we got two little gnomes in love. Super darling. Okay, Pink Tossed Hearts. Uh, it, I actually ended up using, I cut a half a yard. You'll have a little extra. It's always good to have a little extra. And um, just in case you make a mistake or, you know, put in another project, right? Uh, then for this red here, which is super darling, um, the Pink Toss Hearts also have things like hugs in it, XOs. It's got a, a locket with a heart, a heart-shaped locket with where you can put a key, little keyhole in it. Super darling. This is red gnome, red gnomes with envelopes. I mean, just like Valentine's, right? And so you've got all these little gnomes with little hearts all over the place. You got some envelopes. Uh, one of the envelopes here actually has X's and O's on it. This one has a heart on it. They have hearts on their little hoodies. I mean, just super darling. For that fabric, I actually used three quarter. Again, I had a little extra, but it's always good to have a little extra, right? So those are the only three for the topper. If you were going to use a backing, you'll also need, and you want uh, two yards for uh, the seam, and I, I don't know why I was saying two yards, but this way. <laughs> if you, let me start that over. Okay, for your backing, if you would like your seam to be up and down, it'll take you two yards. Now that is without overage, and the reason I don't do overage is because if you're doing it by domestic, you'll need less of overage. If you're quilting it sending it to your long armor or using your own long arm, then you will want more, right? So I always leave that up, but I'm telling you, if you didn't have any overage, except the half seam that you're gonna lose, or your seam that you're gonna lose, that is included. And it would be two yards for a length seam, okay? By length. <laughs> I think I just like doing this. <laughs> and for binding, um, I am, I calculated this at two and a quarter binding and it was a third of a yard, but I'm, I, if my math serves me right correctly, it'll be a half a yard if you do the two and a half inch binding, but I'm going to use a two and a quarter on this one. So that's where the third of a yard comes from. I'm still going to cut half a yard regardless because, you know, a third of a yard is kind of weird. All right. So that's all that you will need. Now I will tell you, mine actually finishes uh, at 34 and a quarter by 51 and three quarter. I say mine because depending on how you cut your panel, the size may change, okay? But that's a good estimate. I didn't take off a whole bunch. Um, maybe, well obviously, somewhere between a quarter and a half of an inch, okay? So it really just depends, okay, how much you take, but it, it's a rough estimate. Mine was 34 and a quarter by 51 and three quarter. So you could say, you could even round it down or up. I mean, it's about that size. And I wanted to give you a heads up because it's not a big project. It's gonna be super fast. So if you've got a granddaughter or a niece or a nephew or a child that you'd love to give something and they're small, 
and they would really enjoy these gnomes and these hearts and it's Valentine-y and you know, this would be a great gift. Okay, I'm stoked about it. I don't know if you can tell. Okay, so that's all the goodies. Before we begin, I do want to say, if you're new here, welcome. And if you've been, if you're coming on back, thank you for stopping by. I really do appreciate every single one of you. This is so much fun. I love sharing with you guys. I love when you share back. I mean, it's just awesome. This is such a great little area. If you are new and you like the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Would love to have you around. And don't forget to hit that little bell, ting. So it will remind you when there is a new upload. Generally, they are on Wednesdays, but it will let you know when it, it does get uploaded. Okay, so first thing first, before we can even start cutting and, and measuring and sewing and doing all the wonderful things, before we can do any of that, we got to make sure that panel is straight. Yep. I know if you are a panel buyer or maybe you've talked to another quilter and they tell you about the panels they get, a lot of times they don't come straight. So I'm going to throw a picture up here because, or up here, one of these sides. This particular picture shows you how that panel, how this panel, this panel right here, this is the one I worked with. Um, came to, you know, me <laughs> and, um, it's not a printing issue and it doesn't have to be hard to make it straight. Okay. I'm going to show you a method that I use to straighten the panel and it'll work on every panel. Okay. It is awesome. It's not my idea. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't figure it out on my own. I can't take credit for that. I actually, um, I, I saw this from uh, Stephanie at Hoffman Fabrics. So thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, Hoffman Fabrics. This is amazing. I've seen a lot of different ways, but this one's really good. So I'm going to take you in. Now, the second picture is after, um, I squared it up. Okay. So uh, it is not a hard thing and it does work really, really well. Okay. And guess what we're going to use bias. You know, I talk about in other videos, when you go to sew or you go to cut, you got to be careful when you do it on the angle because it's stretchy. Right. And I've even shown you in different videos, I've warped my project by stretching things to show you, you can warp it and it's really, really stretchy. We're going to use it this time. The bias is our friend. And with that, we're going to take that fabric that came off from the manufacturer. Now it's not a printing issue and it, it truly is not. When you go, when they make that fabric and they go to pull it, to put it on the bolt and wrap it on up to get it out to the quilt store. It, it's part of that finishing and part of putting it on that bolt to get it out. It just gets stretched. Okay. The fiber is alive. It has movement. And when you pull on that bias, it will move. So it's not, it's not a printing issue guys. And it's not hard and there's nothing to be afraid of. So we're, I'm going to show you this method and we're going to get this started and we're going to have a whole heck of a lot of fun all of this fabric and all of these things, if you see something, it should, it will be all this fabric is in our shop. Different notions are in the shop. The link is down below, but that's halo inspired forward slash shop. Don't forget to check us out. We really appreciate your support and all of your business. Cannot tell you how much we, uh, um, how much we appreciate that <laughs> words are hard, but I'm not going to talk anymore. Let's go ahead and get that panel back to where and how it was made and the way that it wants to be and what we want it to be for Valentine. See you guys in just a sec. Okay. Now to straighten out our panels. This is so much fun. So if you'll notice here, well, we'll start down here. So these two ends look pretty good. 
and it goes along and right about here it starts to wane that direction so it really does look a little crooked <laughs> right and it's not the print it's how they finish it and how they roll it on the bolt fabric is um, a fiber that's woven together and so it gets stretched just like when we talk about bias when you cut on a diagonal you got to be very careful because you can stretch those threads out of whack same thing when they rolled it on the bolt it happens to us all but how are we going to straighten this listen guys this is amazing so on this end i have my selvage right which by the way is so super cute gotta love it x's and o's yep always looking at the selvages right so you're going to fold the two together corner to corner okay and you're going to want to put the two ends together along that selvage okay give it a nice little shake put it down on your table now whichever side is the shortest which this is my shortest I'm going to open this up keeping my hand on the short end because I want this to be something I hold on to and I'll share with you in just a second so I do want to mention this is not something I created I actually learned this from Stephanie at Hoffman Fabrics I caught a video of some sort and I did a different panel a different way and it was a nightmare this this method is awesome you're just gonna love this okay so I've got my short end now this is a rectangle if this was a square what we're about to do will turn it into one large triangle right but this is a rectangle so we're not going to get a triangle all the way across but you're going to take this edge because I want this to be a point of my triangle and I'm going to place it over to the other edge okay so I in fact do have this triangle and the bias is our friend guys so I'm going to lift up my fabric keeping I know which one is in fact my short end which is this side and what I'm going to do there's not much here so I'm able to not have to fold it again but I'm going to go ahead and stretch on that bias now the important thing is is you just don't stretch on the top you do in fact stretch all the way down trying to keep it nice and even okay and this is one reason unless i have a really big nasty fold in this i won't press it first um, and that's why so we're gonna just stretch it give it a nice yank and i will say this works if this was too much for you you could fold it one more time and stretch it like that but I think this size is pretty manageable so I'm gonna open her back up I'm gonna do the same exact thing okay I'm gonna take my two selvages I'm gonna put them really close together get those corners lined up give it a little shake oh my gosh y'all okay hold on I don't have them lined up yet you got to make sure they're lined up and when you look you will see I have less I'm gonna measure for the next one so might help if I 66 to sift. okay so I've got about a almost a five inch um, spread it was bigger than that last time so again we're gonna open it up make sure this is our short end so I'm going to line that up okay get a nice little triangle and give it a stretch okay stretch it now I do a little bit at a time because I want to see how far I don't want to go too far on my stretching okay so look at that 
That's your bias. Bias is your friend. Okay, let's see where we're at. <clears throat> All right. This is, to be honest with you, it's kind of fun. <laughs> but get those lined up. Oh, Y'all aren't going to believe this. Put this back down. I am now at, let's put it back, 61, right? I have two inches over here. Look, guys, two inches. So I'm going to do it again. And I will keep doing this until I get really darn close. Okay. And I have seen that there are a lot of different methods. And some of them are crazy. But it works for them. And it might work for you. So I encourage you to Google um, something like... Uh, Square or not Google, but in your YouTube search bar. Well, I guess it might work on Google, too You want to search something like squaring up a panel and you'll see a lot of different methods Some of them are easier than others So I open it back up I didn't stretch a whole bunch of that one Hopefully it was enough. I'm gonna put my two ends together Get those corners matched up nice and pretty. Oh my geez. We are just about there. Here, hold on. Get this together. Put that down. I say we are pretty darn close. I will say, uh, put it back on the 61. I am not even, probably it's an eighth of an inch different. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I might just, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more with you. I'm trying to remember what I did to do some of the middle. Okay, yeah. All right. You don't have to. You can actually press it out after you get really, like right now, I could probably press the rest out. And I'll show you my pressing here in just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time with you guys. Give it a nice stretch. Okay. Go down a little bit, stretch it again. Go down a little bit, stretch it again. Okay. As you get down to the bottom, it gets really hard because of the uh, selvage. The sel you don't want to cut off the selvage before you do this because it's what's holding everything together the way that it was made. So if you cut that off, you're going to lose that stability of your fabric. Oh, this is good. All right. Let me show you here. Boom. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and it's very interesting because, you know, there's a print on here. And to be honest with you, they're lining up really pretty good. They're close. They're not quite perfect. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up both of my selvages corner to corner okay i'm going to pick this up and give it a nice shake shake a shake okay because it does want to go back to the way that it was made then i'm going to take it oh y'all this is this is amazing this is absolutely amazing i'm going to take this end and i'm going to fold it up and I'm going to match all the selvages corner to corners as straight as I can. I'm going to give it a nice shake and then I'm going to press it. Okay, so I've got my iron ready. Because I'm on my cutting board, I don't want to place my pack -a mat on there or um, anything crazy with an iron. I want to keep my, my whole thing intact. So actually what I'm going to do, because I've got cords all over the place, I'm going to swing this around. Okay. So I can place it right here. And basically what I'm going to do, guys, it's better if you do this on your ironing board. And if you do, if you're only off a little bit, when you get your panel, if it's only a little bit off, just a smidge, like when I was down to an eighth of an inch, I could have pressed it at this point. Using a little bit of water 
or a little bit of, you know, best press or starch for this part really does help. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to iron out everything. Now I don't mind the crease that's going to be formed because it's going to help me uh, know where the middle's at. Okay. Don't know if I had them lined up, so I have to see here. Just going to press it all out. All right. I might have been off just a smidge, but we're going to find out. Now we've got a beautiful panel that is nice and straight and ready to trim, but we're going to, we're going to find out just how close we are. Let me push this a little bit out of the way. Okay. Put those two sides together. Well, I'm probably going to press it one more time. Whoop. Might help if I was on. Yeah, I'm going to press it one more time or I'm going to, sh before I, yeah, because I didn't even really get it. So let's do it one more time. Get them nice and straight together. Give it a nice shake -a Shake it on out. Yeah, I can see just, whoop, got to make sure you're straight when you do this. You want those selvages lined up. Okay. I can see one little area that is not quite where it needs to be. Take this other end, making sure it's all lined up nice and pretty. Just doesn't want to stay where it's supposed to. And open it back up again. Good grief. Sorry, guys. I cannot keep it together because it's important that you do that part. <clears throat> keep this together. Give it a little shake a -roo. Put your selvages together. Keep everything lined up. Now, remember my, I, my, this isn't cut perfectly straight when I did cut it. So I will have to trim, but I don't want to trim it until I feel good about where it's at. And then also, I will tell you, um, doing this on ironing board helps a lot. Um, also, what helps is um, using your large iron because the weight actually will help um, get your fabric straight. All right. Open her up. Shaking her out. Lining it up. Perfect. Now she is absolutely ready to cut. Now what I will tell you when you go to do this, Okay, I'm a little finicky about cutting. So real quick, what I'll talk about, I don't have my rotary cutter over here. Or, oh, I do have, an, I do have a, a ruler. I will start at one end. Oh, this is gorgeous, guys. This is gorgeous. Look at that. It's, it's straight, okay? And when we look at the print, the print's on board. Okay, we're good. So I'm gonna start at one end. I'm going to grab a ruler. I've got a six and a half by um, a 
six and a half by 24 and a half, yeah. And I'm just gonna simply line up on my selvage line, okay? And I'm gonna cut, okay, up until I can't cut anymore. And then what I'm going to do is flip it on over and cut from the other side until I meet exactly where I've cut. Again, you wanna line up on your selvage cause it's straight and you wanna go ahead and give it a cut. And that'll make you a nice, beautiful, straight line. Go ahead then and cut off the ends of your selvage and then your panel is ready to, to build on, right? Now I'm putting a border on mine. I'm putting two borders and I wanted to talk about that real quick. I need, need to press it just a little bit more. I can see there's some wrinkles. So what um, I've done is I've done a skinny border, which is gonna go on first. It's two inches with a fabric. I wasn't quite sure exactly. Um, I know it was gonna be more, I think it's more than three strips. So I went ahead and cut four and I went ahead and I put them together like binding because it's skinny. So I'm not gonna lose a lot of fabric or inches in, in my border. So I've done mitered um, or on the bias joints, okay? And then on my larger one, I've cut a four inch, I'm sorry, four and a half inch strips. I did four again. But if I did a mitered border, I mean a mitered uh, joint here, I'm gonna lose a lot of fabric because that's four and a half inches on the diagonal. So there's gonna be a lot of waste. So I did do these just putting the right sides together and sewing your seam, okay? And I've pressed them going to one direction and believe it or not, I pressed them all going one direction on this border too, even though it's a bias and we typically um, try to flatten it out a bit and, and uh, press them open. I did go ahead and press mine to one side or the other. But I wanted to give you a heads up on exactly how I join these. But we're also doing hearts. So let me take you into how I put together a four and a half inch square pieced heart. They will be my cornerstones and it'll add just a bit to our super cute gnome valentine panel. Wall hanging, you know, sofa throw, whatever you would like to do with it. So I'll see you guys up close and personal. We'll get these hearts started and then we'll go from there. See you guys in just a sec. This is our little heart. Now, this next one I'm gonna do, these prints are kind of busy. So I'm going to do my hearts in just white. See how that plays out. So I'm gonna make two of these, isn't that fun? But, or two panel, two Valentine's panels. But this is our heart. It finishes at four and a half inches, which is the same as our border. So it allows for a really nice cornerstone on each of the corners. But you could do as many as you like. You can put them in the middle of your borders. You can do several of them along the way, but I'm just doing four, just trying to make this super easy. So what are we going to need to make our hearts? <laughs> Took me a minute, sorry. <laughs> For each heart, you're going to need two, two and a half inch wide, by four and a half inch tall strips, two of those. You will also need two two and a half inch squares, and you will also need four two and a half, or I'm sorry, one and a quarter um, squares. Now, basically, you take one two and a half and you can divide that in fourths, and you will get four out of one two and a half inch square okay so that's what you're going to need now these are the body so that's why i'm going to do the next one in white because i think it'll stand out more okay and these are going to be your down here to form your point and these are going to be 
up here to form the loop. Now, if you'll notice, okay, that this actually looks pointed, but it'll get cut off with either outside fabric or in my case, the binding, okay? Uh, at least at the two top, the ones on the bottom will be cut off by the border. So those won't be so pointy anymore. Along with the edges, it's gonna get cut off. Now down here, you have about a quarter inch um, for your point. So your point is still gonna stay intact, okay? So that is, and I here's the pressing, okay? And I'll talk about that a little bit. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do, now I'm using a disappearing ink, and I'm not gonna sew, I pre-sewn some of these things so that we can talk about them more quickly, to save a little time, but I will tell you, they're gonna go down on the bottoms, okay? So if you have something directional and or you want a part to show, then you need to pay attention to which way it is being flipped, okay? Now, for mine, I think I'm going to leave it upside down because I want more red to show, all right? But basically, we're just gonna take a ruler that will stretch across it and line her up and when I line up my ruler again, this is one of those situations where we don't want to cover the point. And I'm just gonna make sure that when I'm coloring on here, I just draw a little hash mark to make sure I'm in the corner. When I'm happy with it, I make the full diagonal and connect the dots, okay? So that is one. And we'll do that to two of them, right? Because we use two for each heart. Whoop, it moved, gotta love it. I think, yep, that one's good. And this one's not. So that's why I always check. Oh, perfect. All right, then we connect the dots. All right, so we've got two with our lines on there, okay? <clears throat> now, what's very important is which way you, you line up on top of your strips, okay? So as you see here, we want on the right side, we want the line to go that direction. We're gonna cut here and, oh, I don't want that way. Let's do it this way. We're gonna cut there and we're gonna flip over on this side, okay? Same with this one. Just want to make sure you are good to go. I want less white showing. And it's going to go from this corner down to the center. So both of them are going, just want to make sure what I'm looking at. Both of them are going down towards the point. Once you've done that, I do stitch closest to the side that I'm going to cut. So I'm going to cut this one and I'm going to cut on this side. So I'm going to sew as close as I can to that line on this side. Okay. Close as I can to this line on this side, because we're going to cut over here. So always on the side that you're going to cut. All right. So once you've done that, this is where the beauty comes in of having things prepped for you. Here's what you're gonna have, okay? Now I know it's hard for you to see, but I have stitched along here and I've stitched along here. So now they are done. I again will flip it over and to make sure that I am good to go because if I am not gonna stretch across the entire one, then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to rip a stitch. If I cut first, I'm not gonna be able to do that. So I'm always gonna check first. I'm gonna flip it over and make sure that it goes all the way to the end of the fabric underneath, okay? And I'll do that for both of them. And let me make sure here, looks good. All right, once we are done checking, you're simply going to take 
you're going to line up your quarter inch line on your ruler corner to corner and then you're going to take your rotary cutter and give it a whoop it didn't go all the way through give it a cut make sure that you're all the way off before you remove your uh, before you move your ruler I'm going to sew these together to give me myself some quarter inch I'm some quarter inch <laughs> I'm going to use a quarter inch seam to sew these together so I have a nice little half square triangle so you're going to do that for both of them once you've checked and you know you're good you can go ahead and give them a cut so I lined up my quarter inch line corner to corner and I'm simply going to cut and make sure that it separates and I've done a clean cut and this is what you're going to have now you're going to press these now let's talk about pressing okay isn't he cute he looks like he's poking out this should still be four and a half inches after tall after you're done cutting you can most certainly check that uh, and if you need to I guess you could start over because at this point we have cut that's why I always check that it goes across now if it's bigger then I can trim it down okay because it's better to trim down than it is to um, have to start over because you can't add fabric all right so <clears throat> this is what you're gonna have and when you press on the left side I am pressing towards the dark and on the right side, I'm pressing towards the white. And if you remember, whenever you go to press, whatever you want to press towards, put that on top. And that will allow you to press towards that area. Now be careful with this. I keep manipulating it. This is biasy, so it will stretch. So you're going to want to be very careful when you press that. But this is what you have. So the next step that we're going to do, move this out of the way. All right. The next step is we're going to add all these little triangles or squares, one and a quarter. It's half of two and a half. Okay. So again, we're going to take our uh, little tiny squares here, and we're going to very simply take our ruler line up where right next to the points because we're going to draw a line from corner to corner so I'm going to check again make sure I'm on the point this one's not well is it nope so I'm going to shift it all right try that that's better all right then we're going to draw and connect the dots now you're going to do that to all four I'm going to do two with you, corner to corner. Oop, I don't know what I was thinking. Making sure that you're not on the point, because if you're on the point, your marking utensil is not going to hit the corner, okay? So, you're going to do that to all four, and then for each one of these, you're going to lay them right sides together. So you've marked on the wrong side. We're laying everything right sides together. Now, what I want to mention here is that this side is the same angle going towards the point. This is going, if you make a point at the top, okay? So you're going to go this direction here and this direction here. And we, let's go ahead and do the other one. Let's go ahead and get this done correctly. And one thing that might help if you have lines on your cutting mat and you're doing this on your cutting mat, you can line your points up on the line. Okay. Whoop. Gosh darn. This is slippy slidey today. I'm not putting enough pressure down. And that's not going to hit it. I'm going to go a little bit further. Mm, we'll find out. Let's see. No, that's not going to work. Okay. Because oh, now I'm not straight anymore, but that's okay. You don't need to use the lines to line things up. You just have to make sure that you're hitting the points. All right, there's one. 
Now I want most of this white gone, so I'm gonna cover my ruler with it and draw the line that direction. There we go. All right, so when you line this one up, you're gonna go up towards the center and down from the center, right sides together. So you can you can kind of see where, what's going here. You can kind of see how this is gonna shape into a heart and that'll let you know you've done it right. So again, when I sew, I'm gonna cut on this side, I'm gonna cut on this side, on this side, and on this side. And so I'm going to sew, let me get my handy dandy purple thing. And I'm gonna sew, for this one, I'm gonna sew closest to the side I'm gonna cut on, closest to the side I'm gonna cut on. So but you wanna try and hit right next to that line, okay? If you sew on it, you have a potential of not covering the entire block. If you sew on this side, you won't cover the entire block because when you go to fold this over, it's going to take up some of that seam. And on this one, I'll sew on this side. And on this one, I'll sew closest to this side because I'm going to cut this one, cut this one, cut this one, and cut this one. So what do I mean? Well, I've actually got another one done for you where I've already done all the stitching again. I am going to fold it over, okay, make sure I'm going to cover. Now I can already see I, this one is going to be bigger. I've sewn a little bit too far away from this line. So if you'll, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm telling you that I'm actually a little bigger over here. You can see there's like a piece. So when, once I get this cut and pressed, then I will trim. This whole thing should finish at two and a half by four and a half, okay? So I'll make sure it's square and ready to go. But because I know they're good, again, I'm going to cut it from here and line up that quarter inch line on my ruler, corner to corner. And remember, this is the one that I'm going to need to square up once it's pressed but like i said having too much is better than not enough now i'm not i don't know about y'all but i am not keeping that <laughs> those are a little small so we will put those in the trash for sure okay now as far as pressing goes let's see where's the one i did okay and it will help you remember all right, so this is this side, okay? I'm going to press this one going towards the white. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm gonna go towards the white. And the reason I do that is so that I can nest my seams, okay? So towards the white on the right, towards the red or the background on the left. Okay, on the places they're going to meet. This one doesn't matter which way you which way you go. So I'll probably end up going towards the red. Okay. So that's how I keep it straight. But that way when I go to sew these together, this point, see I've sewn, I've pressed this one going towards the white. Okay. I've pressed this one going towards the left. So when I go to sew these together, those seams will nest and help really get a beautiful point down here at the bottom, okay? And the same thing for this point right here. Because I will press them in opposite directions, I'll be able to nest them and it'll make those points really, really pretty. Now over here, those don't matter because there's nothing there to worry about. It'll be one solid piece or it'll be my binding, okay? So, I am making four of these. I will, then you, after you've cut these and pressed them, you go ahead and sew the two sides together 
to give you your beautiful heart. That's it, guys. It's all about two and a half. So two and a half by four and a half strips. You'll need two of those. Two two and a half inch squares. You'll need two of those for your background. These were one and a quarter each. You'll need four of those for the top. And that'll all finish at four and a half inches. So now let's get this all thing put together, get everything cut, sewn, and add them to our border. I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, so all trimmed up, ready to go. I don't think she's hanging straight, but my eyes are severely crooked, I swear to you. I mean, I you should see what I have to go through to get the camera right. So um, I'm gonna start with these small borders, okay? And I've done this a million times on this channel, I'm sure. So I'm gonna walk through the beginning of this and I won't do it on the design wall. I'll actually lay it on a table because I want it to lay just the way it's going to. So for this small border, what I'll do is I'll lay this out and I'll put this straight down the middle. Now I already did this once as far as like measuring and I'm running into a seam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up a little bit. I'm gonna trim it nice and straight, giving myself a few inches. I'm gonna lay it right on top, fold a crease, and snip it there at the bottom, okay? That is going to give me the length down the middle. And then I'll take it and I will sew a quarter inch seam on this side, attaching it with the wrong sides together. And then I'll do the exact same thing for a second strip, okay? And I'll attach it, quarter inch seam. Now, once those two sides are on, then I'm going to be able to do the top and the bottom and I will do exact same thing. This one's not quite as long, but once we have the strip on, these two inch strips attached, there'll be an inch and three quarter on this side and an inch and three quarter more on this side. So I will then lay it out again, right down the middle where it stops i'll put a little crease by folding it and then take some scissors and cut for the top and the bottom and then she'll be done with the short border now the bigger border is a little different because we are using the cornerstones so i'm going to get all of this on okay and when i come back at you we'll talk about the last border um, my method there's a million out there but this is the one that i choose to do so I'm going to show you that once I get all of the, this on. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, so as you see, I have all of the small borders on, okay? And I went ahead and I did the same method, uh, measured with my fabric. I laid it out on the table and I measured down the middle, put the one in here. When I got down to the bottom, I folded it to the edge of the fabric down there, gave it a nice finger press to give me a crease, went ahead and snipped it, did that for two of them and hung them both sides, okay? So I've got these second borders on. Now the top border, if you remember, we did the hearts, right? So this is how I get around that, yes. All right, so I've got my measuring tape here. Now you don't have to do a measuring tape you could put this and you want to do this on the table. You don't want to do this on the wall. Okay. But you can lay it out, put a piece of red fabric and measure across just to this last seam. Start on this last seam to this last seam, but you'll have to add a half an inch. It works the same with a measuring tape. So I brought my handy dandy measuring tape. So <clears throat> basically what I'll do, I did is my line actually does not start at the metal thing. <laughs> Careful of that because mine's like, I don't know, a whole inch. Starting with this seam right here between the first and second border, I'm gonna lay that line right out on top. Okay, I'm gonna measure on my table, I would not do this on this on the um, on the design wall. Okay, so you're gonna lay this out, and you're gonna measure to this second border. So, for grins, 
let's just say if this was on the table, it would say 25 and 3 quarter. I'm going to take that 25 and 3 quarter and I'm going to add a half an inch, which then makes it 26 and a quarter. That's what I'm going to cut a piece of red at, okay? Why? Because we're going to add those heart blocks on all four corners, okay? And why do I add a half an inch? Because we're going to lose a half an inch right here at this seam. Okay, so I went ahead and I have cut both of mine and sewn them. And I went ahead and I put the hearts on there. Like I said, I'm gonna do another one with just white because I think it'll stand out a lot better. But when you do this, I also pressed, when I added my heart, I pressed the seam going towards the border this seam is pressed going away from the quilt, okay? So again, what that's gonna let me do is it's going to allow me to nest seams. So if we put it up here, you will see, I hope, there we go, that my seams actually do meet and it goes to the end of the quilt. And when I go to pin, I will pin at the seam that I want to match first. Pin here, pin at this one, pin in the middle, and pin the ends, okay? Lots of pinning. I always pin lots of pins when I do borders because lots of shifting can go on. And the same goes, that's why I'm still measuring from the middle because when I put these borders on, I could have had shifting, I could have tugged too much. I, I mean, there's so many things that can happen. So I wanna make sure that I don't have a wavy quilt when it's said and done. Okay, so I'm gonna get my border on both top and bottom. Okay, so as a recap, we measure from this first seam to this second seam and add a half an inch, okay? Put your lovely hearts on there and then add them to the top and bottom, okay? Just an FYI, that's how I do it. It works great, trust me. So let me go ahead and get mine off done off camera and I'll see you in just a second. Okay. She is all done. I got to be real with you, though. <laughs> I have to rip a seam. Let me tell you why. I sewed on the hearts on the bottom, so they're facing upside down. Wasn't even thinking. <laughs> so I'm going to rip that seam before 3 o'clock today, which, by the way, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, don't hesitate to drop them down below or come visit us at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time or Eastern Standard Time because I'm here in Virginia today live on Facebook for our live quilting and answers. I know this picture is really, I mean, I'm chopped up, right? So I did take a picture of it. I'll throw it up here. This is absolutely darling as soon as I fix the hearts. And I am going to do a second one. I'm going to go ahead and leave this border. I kind of like it but I'm going to make the inside of the hearts, I'm going to use um, my Tone on Tone Blossoms white um, to put in the center. I think it'd be a lot more visual. So you can look forward to seeing that uh, today at 3 p.m. This is fast, guys. It's easy, it's fun. I hope that um, stretching your fabric or your panels at the beginning really showed you a new method to get these uh, panels straight. It works uh, for all sizes and it works well for um, squares, rectangles, you name it. So super awesome, super love that. I hope you did too. But that's what we got. Now, you might be asking me, how am I gonna quilt this? So I'm gonna have two, so on uh, on this one, I think I'm just going to do straight lines that are 
wiggly, I think. <laughs> On the second one, I'm going to really utilize the motif, so, you know, or the design. So I'm going to outline his hat, his nose, and his whiskers. I'll put some lines that go along with, uh, or his beard. So the lines will go within his beard. I'll outline the heart, his little coat pocket here, his little shoe, hers too. I can do the same thing with the uh, white braid. Um, I'll probably just outline this pink here, but I'll do some um, echoing in here with the stripes. Uh, it'll take some time because I'll be switching threads a lot. Uh, and then in the background, there are hearts in here. So basically I'll outline the hearts and meander through to get the hearts done. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a whole lot of, I don't know how I'll do the borders when, when I do this yet. That's the only thing I haven't decided on. But for the most part, I'm really going to utilize the panel to tell me what motif to quilt. So I am going to do it on both of them on my um, domestic. Um, but yeah, super cute, super fast, super easy, and super fun. Um, I actually like it. I like it a lot. So uh, if you have an idea how you might quilt it, let me know. Love to hear that from you. Everybody's got fantabulous ideas. Be a lot of fun to hear. But yeah, so before three o'clock today, I've got a rip a seam. <laughs> me and Date are going to have a jack. I mean, me and Date. Oh my gosh. Me and Jack are going to have a date. And I'm going to go ahead and prep the backing. And um, I might start quilting one. We'll have to see. I might get this one quilted. It'll just depend because straight lines, they won't take long. And I will definitely be using Quilter's Dream. So I'll have eight inches to, to manipulate with that. So hopefully I get started on that tomorrow so it doesn't sit too long. But yeah, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. And next week, we will be doing a live YouTube um, chair chip chat time. Um, hope to see you all then. But until next time, guys, until next week or until later today at 3 p.m. Until that next time, may you continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing, and never stop making your dreams and quilting come true. I will see you all soon. Thank you all for stopping by. Happy quilting.